Indeed, God, you're a faithful God, and that is why even this evening, Jehovah, we lift up our eyes to you, and we proclaim and decree that you are the God that we serve. And Lord Jehovah, as we prepare to hear the message that you have prepared for us this evening, Father Lord, may you minister to us in a language that only we can understand. And Lord Jehovah, I submit myself as a vessel as the others sit and I remain standing into your hands. We commit ourselves and it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Let's give praise and worship. Appreciate them for a job well done. Chapia tumshangilie mwenyezi mungu na makofi mazuri. Indeed, he's a faithful God, he's a loving God, and he's the God even this moment and this hour we proclaim that we shall serve and we shall exalt all the days in our lives. Just as I've been introduced, my name is Evelyn Sunday, and I love the Lord as my personal savior. He saved me when I was a young girl, and up to date this minute, this hour, it is my joy to proclaim that he is God indeed in my life. I also want to thank God for the opportunity that he has given me, for the opportunity that he has given you to be in his presence this evening so that we can learn, we can hear the message that he has for us and that indeed we shall be blessed, that we shall not be the same people who walked that through that door, that Jehovah indeed would have ministered into our lives. I also want to thank the provost of this cathedral for the opportunity that he has presented to me to be the one sharing the word this evening and I do not take it for granted that uh, this occurrence and this opportunity has come forth. This evening I know today has been a prayer and fasting day and that we have set aside our busy schedules and just found time to praise and to pray and to bring our petitions to our Father. Amen? Isn't it a, a privilege that God has given us to be the counted ones this day, to be actually come into his sanctuary and just pray and thank him and praise him for the answered prayers that we have lifted unto him today. Amen? Amen. The reading today will be taken from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 23. I don't know whether the studio would be able to project the reading so that we can move together. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, beginning to read from verse 23. Again, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to the land, you are a land that has not been cleansed or rained on in the day of wrath. There is a conspiracy of her princes within her like a roaring lion tearing its prey. They devour people, take treasures and precious things and make many widows within her. Her priests do violence to my law and profane my holy things. They do not distinguish between the holy and the common. They teach that there is no difference between unclean and the clean. And they shut their eyes to the keeping of my Sabbath so that I am profaned among them. Her officials within her are like wolves, tearing their prey. They shed blood and kill people to make unjust gain. Her prophets whitewash these deeds for them by false visions and lying divinations. They say, this is what the sovereign Lord says when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land practice extortion and commit robbery. They oppress the poor and needy and mistreat the foreigner, denying them justice. I looked for someone 
uh, just hang on there, studio. We will pick it up from there. The book of Ezekiel is a book written by the major prophet. It is part of the major prophet's book. And amongst the other books in the prophetic major books are the book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah, Lamentations, and Daniel. And the book of Ezekiel contains visions and prophecies that Ezekiel received from the Lord to minister to the Jewish captives while in Babylon. When you read the book of Ezekiel, you learn that Ezekiel was a priest who was among the Jewish captives and was carried away to Babylon. So Ezekiel was taken into captivity to Babylon along with the Israelites by King Nebuchadnezzar. And the key message in this book shows that the Lord is mindful. He cares for his people. Even today, the Lord cares for you and the Lord cares for me. It does not matter where you are. It does not matter the season that you are facing right now because we see even in Babylon, God appointed Ezekiel and Daniel who were priests while they were in captivity to encourage the children of God. As we read this book, we learn that God regards prophets as watchmen to warn his children of danger. From the text we have just read, some of the ills that were happening in the land of Israel are things that God detested. It separated the children of God from their God. And even today, some of the things that we have read in the scripture that we have just read are things that we even see in our society today. The word of God is alive. What was then is also applicable to us this evening in our lives today. They mention taking treasures and precious things. These are things we see in our society today. You find documents have been forged. You find title deeds are missing. Even today, we make many widows amongst our society. Isn't that right? I live in Zimmerman. And yesterday was a terrible, terrible afternoon. The gunshots that flared in the air was traumatizing. When we sat with my family, it actually sounded like Gaza. The menace stopped at around 8.30. And you can just imagine the lives that were lost. We make many widows, even today. Another item that has been mentioned by the prophet Jeremiah is that the church violates God's law and profanes my holy thing. I had to Google the word of the meaning profane. Profane means to treat something sacred with disrespect. Don't we see some of these things in our society today, in our churches today? The other thing the prophet highlights is that they teach there is no difference between clean and unclean. Saizi kitu ineza pita tu tuseme tu ni sawa. LGBTQ tunasema tu ni sawa. Abortions in our society tunasema tu ni sawa. That demarcation of this is right and this is wrong slowly seems to be wading away. They shut their eyes from keeping my Sabbaths. Sabbaths these days are no longer considered sacred. We shed blood, we kill people, and make unjust gain. He also mentions that they commit extortion and robbery. And today, even in our society, kitaka kupata tender, what must you do? Kitu kidogo, sindeo? Extortion and robbery. Why am I highlighting these items? I want to bring out the aspect that what the Israelites did then are some of the things that we can also see in our society today. Things that make God angry. The injustices are on the rise. Ezekiel calls the land that you are a land not cleansed. A land full of iniquities and transgressions. 
In the previous chapter, when you read Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 19, God says it, that I will repay him for despising my oath and breaking my covenant. I will spread a net for him, and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring them to Babylon and execute my judgment on him. And then he says, because he was unfaithful to me. I just want to take a moment and reflect in our families, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our church, even at the marketplace. Are these some of the things that we see happening in our day-to-day -day lives? Can we identify with one or two or three or all of them that these are ills that have risen in our lives. How many families today are in pain? How many families today are crying? How many families today are searching for missing loved ones? There are many. It might not have happened to us, but there's a family somewhere in pain. And there's a reason why we are in this season. We do not take it for granted that uko mahali hapa katika musimo hu. Kazi yetu si kuangalia tu. There's a need to stand in the gap before God. Just as it was urgent now, it was also urgent 600 years before the birth of Christ. Studio, if we can continue with verse 30, and I will encourage us to read it together. The continuation of where we stopped. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. Church, let us read it together. I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land, so I would not have to destroy it. But I found, I found, I looked, sorry. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger, bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the sovereign Lord. God is looking for someone. And he's saying that he did not find anyone. And when I read this verse, I just asked the Lord, raise intercessors. Raise intercessors for the church. Raise intercessors for our families. Raise intercessors for our country. And we can see that one way we can evade the wrath of God as it has been stimulate, stipulated that my wrath on them and I will consume them with my fiery anger is by rising and standing in the gap. And I'm encouraged on a day like this that when we call the prayer and fasting day, many of you have turned up. And prayer and fasting together with intercession does wonders in our society. Intercessors move things. They shift realms in the spiritual realm. Amazingly, as we have read, they can also turn the wrath of God from touching our children, from destroying our families and our nation and our marketplaces and our cities. Intercession ministry works behind the scenes. Most of the times we do not see it. But it is a ministry that works behind the scenes in alignment to the will of God. The prayer of an intercessor touches the heart of God. It makes God to render forgiveness to restore, to heal the land, 
and a pouring of his masses upon mankind. At times we may not experience the miracles that God has ordained for us because the intercessors that God is looking for to pray for and on behalf of others are not there. Let us look at what the intercessors that were there before. It is not a new thing in the Bible. We find Esther, the queen, intervened for her nation. We find Moses intervened for the people of Israel. Stephen prayed when he was being stoned. Abraham's intercession for the city of Sodom. He boldly pleads with God to spare the city. And because of his persistent prayers, God hears and he spares that city. What a joy it can be if the church gathered here can rise up and pray and intercede for our church, for our families, and for our nation at large. What is intercession? Intercession is the act of bringing a request before the Lord on behalf of others. Najua tumezoea kujiombea. Mungu nisaidie, mungu nibariki, mungu fungua milango. But intercession is an aspect of prayer where we may indulge in, but we need to increase our level of intercession when we look at what is going on in our society. God needs us to stand in the gap. An intercessor carries the burdens of others. Unajitwika huo mzigo ni kama niyako, na unaipeleka mbele zake mwenyezi mungu. Let me explain it well. Intercession is filling a cup of prayer so that God can pour out an answer. What normally happens, there are two cups. There is a cup that is full of infirmities, full of transgressions, full of sins. And this cry cries out to the Lord. And there is the second cup that is filled with our prayers, with our petitions, and with our pleas to God. And what normally happens is that when our cup of prayer is empty, then we face the wrath of God. But when our cup of iniquities and transgressions overflow, and the prayers that we need to raise, just as it has been mentioned, is low, then we are taken into captivity in Babylon. Then we find ourselves in situations that are not so pleasurable, caused by ourselves, and yes, it could also be caused by the enemy, but we do not run away from the fact that some of the things we get entangled in, it is of our own doing. Let us look of someone who actually took the ministry of intercession seriously. Studio, if you could just portray the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 5. We will find Job, who was a man regarded highly by God, and he had a regular custom of interceding on behalf of his children. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cast God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. See at your matenda dhambi, anasema perhaps, ineza kuwa kana kwambo watoto wangu wa metenda dhambi. Intercession is praying and interceding and carrying the burdens of others ensuring that that cup never goes empty, that that cup is filled with prayers, is filled with our fast, is filled with our petitions, that it overtakes the cup of infirmity. These two cups are competing, infirmity 
and prayers. And today I ask in our lives, which cup, which cup is getting filled more? Are our prayers more of our needs or do we pray for others? And we will understand and see why it is important to pray for others. There is a preacher who said that 80% of his prayers is about praying for others. And I didn't understand how someone would spend 80% of his time in prayer, not praying for himself, but praying for other people. I'm reminded of the verse that Jesus, when he was about to be crucified, in Luke chapter 22, verse 39, and he took his two disciples in the garden of Gethsemane, and he told them, pray so that you don't fall into temptation. And when he arose from prayer and went back to his disciples, what did he do? He found them asleep. And you know what he asked them? He asked them, why are you sleeping? And I think that is the question that I will ask myself this evening. Why am I sleeping? When I look in our families, when I look at our society, where is our prayer life? How comes infirmity has overtaken and taken reign in our society? Intercession is not about imposing our will, but aligning our hearts and partnering with God to bring his purposes on earth. And for us to know what his purposes are, for us to know what his plan is, because when we pray for our nation, it is not the way I want Kenya to be led. It is the way God has designed and ordained Kenya to be. Amen? So we need to align our prayers with God's plan and God's destiny over our families. When I pray for others, for my children, for my family, for my work marketplace, I ask God, let your will be done. I might not have the solution. I might not have the answer. But I know you, God, you are in charge and you are in control. And if it happens to be aligned to what you have ordained for it to be, then it is well. What does an intercessor need to do or to have? Because this evening, I want us to rise up as great intercessors in the body of Christ. The first thing that an intercessor needs to have is to have a relationship with the Father. Prayer is normally the first and foremost item in an intercessor's life. And why do we do that? We do that because for us to know the plans that God has for our lives, for the church, then we need to meditate in his word and understand the heart of God and understand the character of God. Studio, I would request us to just portray Genesis 18. Sorry, Exodus chapter 9, verse, chapter 32, verse 9 to 14. And so that we can just see how Moses interceded for the children of Israel. Exodus chapter 32, verse 9 to 14. And this is what it says. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them, that I may destroy them. Then I will make you a great nation. But, but Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off 
the face of the people. Remember your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by yourself, own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give you descendants all this land I promised, and it will be their inheritance forever. The Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. For us to understand the heart of God, Moses identified with the promises that God had given to his people. And he was able to go back to scripture because scripture is the foundation of intercession. And to reason with God and plead with God in alignment to his word. Because you promised that you will make descendants as numerous as the stars. You promised that you will deliver your people from the hand of the captivity. He uses the word of God to negotiate with God and to ask God to have mercy on his people. And even today, this is the direction we can take, to plead with God based on his word that God you promised, my children will be great in the land of the living. That God you promised, my children will be the head and not the tail. If we do not spend time in fellowship with God, if we do not read the word and meditate and delight in his commands and his laws, then we will not know the language to use in our intercession. Scripture is the foundation of intercession. And Ezekiel reminds us that God does not take pleasure in the death of anyone. He urges us to repent from our evil ways and he assures us that sin will not be our downfall if we read ourselves from all offenses and get a new heart and a new spirit. God's plan for us is that no one should perish. Mungu hapendi kuona ata moja wake. Watoto wake, anasemanga kwa mkono wangu, they will not be snatched from the palm of my hand. It is not his prayer, it is not his desire to lose anyone of his children. And that is why we, as prayer warriors, we who have gathered here, we have the mandate to rise up and pray on behalf of others, on behalf of our families. In our families, you will find you are the one who stands in the gap. In the church, you are the one who stands in the gap. And God is counting on you. God is counting on you to bridge that wall. And I'm encouraging myself this evening that may I receive the grace to fulfill the agenda that God has in my life. The second item that intercessors have is that intercessors pray out of love. Na kwambia kama hauna upendo, huwezi yombea mtu mwingine. Most at times, we tell people, nita kuombea. What happens? Tukitoka kwa hiyo mlango, mambo ni mengi, pengine tunasahau. Ama zetu zinakuwa mingi, kitambo tumalize maombi yetu, tukifikia mwingine, saa imeisha, sindio? Let us pray out of love for others. The letter of 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 8 says, Above all, Love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. If you do not have love for your brother and if you do not have love for your sister, even praying for them, I assure you, it will be difficult. Jomana unatupatanga tunenda moshene. Umeona, umesikia. And that is the opportunity for you to rise up and say, Oh God, shikilia huyo mwanadada. Oh God in heaven, have mercy on that family. Oh God in heaven, have mercy on this country, Kenya. And we see that if the people who were intercessors did not have love, then they would not be able to stand in the gap. Jesus died for sinners. Watu ambao alimdhulumu, people who persecuted him. But Jesus died and said, oh God, they do not know what they are doing. Look at Job. Job prayed for his friends. 
Wenye walikuja kumwambia wewe si umetenda dhambi. Kiri dhambi yako ili Mungu afanye nini? Akusamehe. God is calling us to pray out of love. It may be your enemies, it may be your relatives. I don't know what we are facing this evening. But there is a call that we need to pray for others. We need to love others deeply. Because love is the greatest of them all. My prayer this evening is that God will fill us with a Christ love. With that agape love. That when we pray for others in an unselfish expression of love, just the way he loved us, just the way he saved us, a murderer, a sinner, a thief, but God, through his son Jesus Christ, he extended his love to us and took the sacrifice to die for us. And that is a pure expression of love on our Lord and Savior. The third point is that an intercessor has the power and authority. Usijichukulie ukiwa mtuduni. Yule ambaye anamkimbilia Mwenyezi Mungu kwa maombi. Yule ambaye ananyenyekea mbele zake. Uko na nguvu na uko na mamlaka. It does not matter the situation that is ahead of us. Don't look at the mountain. Look at the creator. Because our strength comes from him. Jesus has all the authority over heaven and earth. And there is nothing that the accuser can bring before him. And when he accuses us, he quickly says, I paid that debt. I paid that debt. Walk in the power that he has given us to trample over the snakes and the scorpions and to emerge victorious as an intercessor when you pray. You have the legal authority over the evil one. Because God has commanded us. An intercessor responds to the command that God has given. That go and pray for others. And when you're doing it, you're not doing it as evilly. You're doing it as a command that God has given you. And when you go to a meeting and you say you're representing, say, you're representing Evelyn. It is not Evelyn. You're representing Evelyn. So you're God has given you that mandate. And it is his voice that speaks through you to be able to overcome and triumph all the works that the enemy has intended or is planning for us. A believing warrior is a dangerous person in the midst of the evil of this world. The fourth thing, and this is what I really loved about uh, the message today, is that praying for others opens our doors. I don't know whether we knew that. That kuombea mwingine pia wewe unapata jibu ya maombi yako. Studio, if we can look at Job chapter 42 verse 10, please. I think this will be the last verse. The book of Job chapter 42 verse 10. I request us to read together. That after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. We will leave it at 10. Are you seeing the blessing intercessory carries? That when you pray for others, God also meets with your point of need at that point of prayer. The friends for Job were almost like his enemies. Kwa sababu wamekuja kumkejeli. But mungu anamuambia, ombea marafiki wako. 
na kwa hakika hiyo ni jambo gumu mno kuambiwa kwamba ombea adui wako but god expects us that through obedience we carry that mandate we carry out that command to do as his word says it when you read the book of job god regarded job as blameless i call it buffs b is for blameless upright he feared the lord and he shunned evil that is how god views you as a child of god and his friends regarded him as a sinner who had done something wrong his wife also told him to curse god and die don't agree to settle with what the world labels you look and regard yourself according to what god speaks about you in his word when he says that you have the power and authority believe it when he says that you can tell the mountain to move and fall into the ocean believe it because his word is true and in this life it is a choice you make when you believe what the world and the enemy speaks about you kidogo kidogo tu naona anga pia maisha yako imeanza ku shape hivyo you can't do that nyinyo utasamanga hiyo mimi siwezi napatia promotion unamwambia this is the assignment you're like that one i don't think i can do regard yourself as god regards you i wonder what must have been going on in job's mind that here he is sick his body was full of sores he has lost all his children he has lost all his wealth he is righteous but still he's facing the tribulations that he's facing na bado Mungu anamwambia ombea marafiki wako one thing i learn is that regardless of the season you're going through as an intercessor as an intercessor you have to remain faithful to the call you have to remain faithful to the call And the highest form of selfless intercession is not only towards those who can help you but to those also who would harm you. Let you and me be found standing in the gap. In the gap for our nation, in the gap for our families, in the gap for our church. that when god looks that sentence of i found no one will not exist that we will be truthful to that call to intercede because someone has to step up may that person be me may that person be you that even as we watch the news you're praying you're not just watching but you're praying even when you hear a neighbor probably you can do nothing about it but you know there's something you can do you can pray about it an intercessor changes the course of history of our destinies and i pray this evening that you will honor that invitation of praying for others that our cup of prayer will overflow compared to the cup of the infirmities that are in our lives in our families today we just need one person to stand and pray for our families and i know that god who is faithful and who speaks through his word he will honor his word and fulfill it according to his will amen amen let us pray our god and our father we come before you this evening we exalt you we praise you 
We lift you on high, heavenly Jehovah, and we acknowledge that you are our God. You remain to be a God who's faithful, a God whose word stands over time. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, your word remains to be firm and truthful in our lives. God, it is my prayer that you will make us intercessors, that we will stand in the gap for our nation, for our families, for our churches. Oh God, Jehovah, give us the resilience to persevere through. Give us the special anointing, just as you gave Job, to arise from all the situations that we face, and that Lord Jehovah, we can raise up our voices unto heavens on behalf of others. Thank you, Lord, for your message that has come to us this evening. And I pray, Jehovah, that in obedience, we shall fulfill the mandate that you have set for us. And it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Let us thank God.